Hey guys, Core Ross and Rainbow Six News. So Rainbow Six Siege's next season is coming soon. It'll be revealed on May 26, which is three weeks away from now. And this season will be a little bit different as we'll be getting two new operators with full gadgets on both attack and defense, but in a different way from normal because they will both be recruits as we're getting what is called a recruit remaster. And this means that the recruits will become full operators and they'll have main gadgets. Now I presume because they're the first operators you unlock when you get the game brand new, that their gadgets will be very support based. Also remember it is possible to bring five recruits on your team. So you don't want to have a very powerful gadget. Well, let's just imagine they were all given fused cluster charges. You wouldn't want five operators running around with those charges as that would be of course quite mayhem, although it would also be cool. So the gadgets for attack and defense will also have to work when everybody picks recruit. These recruits will also be playable in ranked as well. So they get an entire makeover. Now that makes me think that they're going to also have cosmetics, even potentially elites in the future too. However, I do think the visuals they showed off are a bit of a red herring as they showed the recruits from Rainbow Six Mobile. Now they could just take over those visuals and use them in the main game, but I think this is because the new recruits will actually be Deimos' men, but that's a pure guess on my part at this point. Now let's talk about the rest of the features coming with Season 2. So the stuff listed as major features is the Reputation System full release. This has already been delayed, so this will not be shown up in Season 2. Then we've got the Siege Marketplace. This is currently in a closed beta. It seems to be working exceptionally well, and it's very, very popular. So I expect to see this launch for Season 2. And it's going to be very good. I think it's a great feature. It's not an in-game feature, but people are going to love it. Then we've got the map filter for standard playlist. This is very simple. You can see we've got in the standard settings here. We've got map filter. We've got three options total. This one's currently set to casual, which has Shelly, Oregon, Bank, Nighthaven Labs, and Border. So you're going to have different selections of maps you can go into. And unfortunately, it's not got ones where it will give you a specific map to select but you can get a few of the maps. So hopefully you can find one of the ones in here that will have the maps you like to play and you can use that to play those maps. Oh yeah, and I, I don't really see this to me as a major feature. Then we've got player protection. So there's gonna be some upgrades with Steam improved ban enforcement. So no idea how this will actually shape out, but of course every anti-cheat stuff you can add in, the better. Cause right now, of course, every FPS is just destroyed with cheaters these days. Then we've got balancing. So this is going to be interesting. We've got a Fenrir update. Now there's no details on what's going to happen here, but they're going to be adjusting him. So I've got no clue how exactly this will go. And they talk about how they're going to improve the balance between attackers and defenders. So just really interested to see what that will end up being. We've also got Solus update part one. So this is like the Grim rework where he went through a couple of different phases of changes. So Solus is getting this too. Now, presumably one of the first ones might just be that she can't use her gadget during the prep phase. That could be a very simple update and that could be the part one, but we currently have no clue. So it's better to see some major balancing for both of these operators. Then we've got something I'm actually excited about and that is the after action screen 2.0. To me, this looks absolutely cool as hell. So I'm looking forward to this. It actually has little names down here for all the different people showing what they did best in the game, which I think is great. Now it does have four attackers here, as you see, and one defender. So I don't know if this means we might actually get a few different operators from different teams showing up in this point, but no clue. We've also got this, which shows obviously where you can give the reputation boost to different players. So all of it looks nice. I like it um, far better than the current one. So I'm looking forward to this a lot and hopefully that will end up being really cool. We've also got drone jump pre-visualization. So you've seen that we now have grenades uh, showing where they're gonna land and stuff like that. We now have this with our drones. So when you jump, or I don't know exactly how it's gonna show up, but it's now gonna show a visual that'll let you know where the drone's gonna jump to. So hopefully you can always end up exactly where you want perfectly every single time. Not a bad option at all. And I think that'll be just as loved as the grenade trails, even though I have them off. I think they are sensational to have on because of course it makes you more accurate. There's updates to the map training playlist. So they're just adding additional maps that you can go and play. They've also, I'm gonna be upgrading the Versus AI too. So that will be something that also gets upgraded. But yeah, that is it. So far that's the entire list for season two. It's not huge. 
So let's go through a kind of conclusion of what this means for the future for season two. Okay, so conclusion. Season two is probably the most unique season we've ever had, apart from maybe Operation Health. Two new operators, which is old school, which is great. That might mean that I have two Mythbuster episodes coming out for one season and that'll be sensational and more like the old days. But also, I assume it will be a relatively simple gadget for both of them. And one that five players can have at the same time without it becoming OP. I would also love if they could all bring back their shields. I think that'd be sensational for the old school uh, fanboys that used to you know, be running around with five recruits with shields. Could see that totally coming back. But with the shield rework being very powerful, I'd be also very worried about that. But then on the other side of things, I think the features is rather lacking. When the roadmap only has down as its major features, the reputation system, the siege marketplace and map filters with the reputation system we know being delayed, it's not much. Like the siege marketplace is not part of the actual game. It doesn't provide gameplay in any way. And the map filter is nice, but not something I would consider a major feature. And then the other stuff that's coming, like the Fenrir update and the Solus update, I'm looking forward to both of that. That should actually be really good. And they're both changes that we've been needing for a long time. Then stuff like the after action report screen is going to be cool. But overall, I think the season is looking rather lackluster. And the recruits are the things that could save the day and be just interesting and cool and kind of freshen things up. And being able to play recruits in ranked and stuff like that are going to be potentially excellent. But when it comes to an overall season, I don't think it's particularly great. Unless they have something surprising lined up, which would have to be a story-based event or a PvE thing or something like that. I just don't see this being a particularly great season. Now, even though it's only three weeks until this season is revealed, I do expect we'll probably get at least one blog post that will be a roadmap update and they'll change a few things here and, there, here and there. They might even pull something from another season to try and replace the reputation system. So maybe something else will get chucked in there just to try and fill it back up again. But we will just have to wait and see if that's the case. Otherwise, we wait until the reveal, which, like I said, is going to be taking place on May 26th. And that's actually at the Manchester Major in the UK. And if you're wondering about launch date, most likely that'll mean that the new season launches on June 11th. Now, when it comes to the first teasers as well, expect to see them starting to drop as of the 20th of May in just a couple of weeks time. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of Year 9 Season 2 in the comment section below and I'll catch you next time.